Good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television, your one-stop uh, morning show for top stories from India and across the world. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and here are the headlines. GST relief for tro small traders and exporters, rates are tweaked on 27 items, IGST relief for six months for exporters. Prime Minister says goods and simple tax is now simpler. India and European Union signed three agreements after summit-level meeting. Terrorism figures prominently in the talks. Delegations demand immediate termination of any support to terrorist groups. India confirms there is no new development at the face-off site in Doklam region. This after China defends the presence of its troops there. International campaign to abolish nuclear weapons wins Nobel Peace Prize. Committee says a recognition at a time when risk of nuclear weapons being used is greater than it has been for a long time. And India loses the opening match at the under-17 FIFA World Cup. Go down 3-0 to US at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Delhi. The top story of the day, the government has announced relief measures for SMEs and uh, exporters on GST. Now, rates of 27 goods and 12 services have been revised. The Prime Minister said that the revision has made the goods and simple tax even simpler. Here is a report. Big announcement by the government on the GST. After a marathon eight-hour-long GST council meet, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley announced that composition threshold limit under GST has been enhanced from 75 lakh rupees to 1 crore. Under the composite scheme, traders will pay 1%, manufacturers 2% and restaurants 5%. GST taxpayers up to 1.5 crore rupees turnover can now file their return on a quarterly basis in place of monthly basis. Jinki dear crore tak ki turnover hai, one and a half crores ki turnover hai, aur isme lagbag 90% assessees cover ho jayenge. Jo outside the composition scheme hai, wo ab monthly return ke sthan par quarterly return file kare jo one and a half crore se zyada turnover wale hain wo purani vyavastha ke mutabik gst 1 2 3 3b sab usi hisab se file karte rahenge the finance minister also said that items including khakhara, plain chapati, food packets under the integrated child development services scheme and unbranded namkeen will now be taxed at 5% instead of 18%. GST rates on unbranded medicines have also been reduced from 12% to 5%. Tax on parts of diesel engine has been reduced from 28% to 18%. To contain the cost of irrigation schemes involving high amount of labor, GST rate has been brought down to 5%. Exporters will start getting refunds of their input credit for the month of July from 10th of October and for August from 18th of this month. Exporters will have e-wallet from the 1st of April 2018 for getting their refunds. e-wallet her exporter ka banega. उस ई वॉलेट में एक नोशनल अमाउंट उसको एडवांस रिफंड की दृष्टि से दिया जाएगा और इस क्रेडिट के माध्यम से जो उसकी प्रोडक्ट्स का आईजीएसटी या जीएसटी देना है वो लोग देंगे a group of ministers has been asked to go into the issue of extending the composition scheme on interstate sales as well as rationalizing taxes on restaurants. The group of ministers will also look into whether manufacturers availing composition scheme can claim input credit on 2% GST paid by them. large tax, major tax collection लगभग 94 95 परसेंट जो बड़े 
प्लेयर से आता है उसका एकदम फ्लो बढ़ता रहे दूसरा जो मीडियम और स्मॉल टैक्स पेयर्स हैं वो टैक्स नेट में रहे ताकि टैक्स बेस बढ़ता रहे लेकिन उनका कंप्लायंस बर्डन हम लोग रिलैक्स कर दे The GST relief to SMEs and exporters and the tax rate cut on 27 items came after Prime Minister Narendra Modi's assurance that the government is committed to reversing the economic slowdown. Reacting to the GST Council's announcement, the PM said on Twitter, "Good and simple tax becomes even simpler. Today's recommendations will immensely help small and medium business." GST is in line with our constant endeavor to ensure interests of our citizens are safeguarded and India's economy grows. Panchanan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And the decision of the GST Council has been welcomed by different states. A Delhi Deputy Chief Minister and Finance Minister Manish Sisodia has appreciated the move but has also argued that the tax has to be made accountable for time-bound delivery. Let's take a listen. ठीक फैसला हुआ है छोटे व्यापारियों को राहत मिलेगी लेकिन डेढ़ करोड़ से नीचे के व्यापारी जब डेढ़ करोड़ से ऊपर के व्यापारी के साथ किसी भी तरह का कोई ट्रांजैक्शन कर रहा होगा ट्रेडिंग कर रहा होगा वहां अब उसको प्रॉब्लम होगी उतना ही कॉम्प्लेक्स सिचुएशन होगी या उससे ज्यादा हो सकती है जी में आज का बात इतना गहिरा था ये सारे एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव टेक्निकल मैटर्स था जिसमें इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इजियर होगा इससे सबसे बड़ा चीज हुआ था जो कंपोजिशन स्कीम में था कंपोजिशन स्कीम में सेवेंटी फाइव लाख से बड़ा था उसको एनहांस करके वन करोड़ कर दिया जाए एंड द ट्रेडर्स अक्रॉस द कंट्री ऑल्सो वेलकम द गवर्नमेंट मूव लेट्स लिसन इन टू सम रियक्शन बहुत बड़ी राहत मिली है लोगों को जो मेंटली एक स्ट्रेस हो गया था कि हम कहाँ से पेन नंबर बनाएंगे आधार बनाएंगे बिल भी चाहिए लेकिन वो दे नहीं पा रहे थे ये सब चीजें डॉक्यूमेंट तो उससे उनको काफी रिलैक्स मिल गया आसानी से परचेस कर सकते हैं और त्यौहार के पहले जो इस तरह की घोषणा करी है जेटली जी ने हम उनके थैंक्स कहते हैं उनको जैसे टैक्स भरते हैं अगर तो जैसे थ्री मंथ वाला जो टैक्स आ रहा है उससे यह है कि व्यापारी को थोड़ा राहत मिलेगी नहीं इससे जो हम लोगों का बिजनेस है वो इजी हो जाएगा क्योंकि देखिए जो लोग आते थे हमारे यहाँ जरूरी नहीं बहुत लोगों का अवेयरनेस नहीं इस चीज़ की कि उनको दो आईडी देनी है एक पैन कार्ड भी देना है और साथ में एक जो है आईडी प्रूफ भी देना है तो उसकी वजह से बहुत से कस्टमर आते थे और लौट जाते थे जब वो होता नहीं था तो हमारे पास कोई चारा नहीं होता था कि हम उनको सामान नहीं बेच सकते अब कम से कम इससे ही होगा कि हमारे फेस्टिवल के सीजन में हमारे कस्टमर्स नहीं लौटेंगे On to some other news now the center has made a biometric identification aadhar mandatory for all post office deposits PPF national saving certificate scheme and kisan vikas patra the deadline to provide the 12 digit unique identification number aadhar is the 31st of December 2017 the recent move by the government is in a continuation with its push for aadhar The government has insisted on quoting Aadhaar for bank deposits, obtaining mobile phones, and several other utilities. As many as 135 schemes will be covered under Aadhaar, including the free cooking gas scheme to poor women, kerosene, and fertilizer subsidy. On to the other top story of the day: India and European have decided to increase cooperation in the development and business areas. they also decided to come forward to cooperate with each other on climate change they also discussed many issues of uh, global and regional importance here is a report european union authorities on friday held their summit level meeting in delhi with prime minister narendra modi chairman of european council donald french is at task and european commission president jean claude uncker led the delegation of 28 european nations three agreements were signed after the summit They included one on cooperation in scientific research, a loan of 300 euro for Bangalore Phase 2 metro project, and cooperation in establishing an interim secretariat of International Solar Alliance, mooted by India in the last climate change summit held in Paris. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also asked European countries to reduce prices of green technologies. पिछले वर्ष के हमारे एजेंडा 2020 और थर्टीन शिखर सम्मेलन में लिए गए निर्णयों के क्रियान्वयन की आज हमने समीक्षा की आतंकवाद के खिलाफ मिलकर काम करने और इस विषय पर अपने सुरक्षा सहयोगों को 
बढ़ाने पर हम दोनों सहमत हैं इस विषय पर हम न सिर्फ द्विपक्षीय स्तर पर अपना सहयोग मजबूत करेंगे बल्कि वैश्विक मंच पर भी अपना सहयोग और समन्वय बढ़ाएंगे Terrorism figured prominently in the talks between the delegations while the European delegation supported India's concerns they also demanded immediate termination of any financial or arms to support terrorist groups to have agreed to develop our dynamic trade and investment relations and that we have agreed to step up cooperation on global and regional issues let me briefly touch on some of these topics We adopted a joint declaration on counterterrorism in which we agree to counter violent extremism and radicalization particularly online and to deal effectively with the threat posed by foreign terrorist fighters terrorist financing and arms supply India and the European delegations also discussed the scope of yet to be finalized free trade agreement The European Union delegation also expressed hope for better collaboration in information technology but wanted data protection agreement to pave ways for India to be back office for Europe's companies. This is why I stressed this morning the importance on the need to agree to the highest standards of data uh, protection. Indian companies have specialized in offering back office and IT services. to european companies many of these services and the jobs that go with them depend on the exchange of data if india's standards of data protection are converging with those of the european union the european union will be in a position to recognize the adequacy of indian of india's rules this is a precondition India and European Union are strategic partners and the delegation had long talks on issues of India's neighborhood including Pakistan, China, Myanmar and Bangladesh. The European Union hoped that India will be more liberal in sheltering Rohingya refugees. European Union is coming forward on the issue of terrorism the way India thinks and faces. There is a scope of cooperation in the IT sector also. but much convergence required on the issue of rohingya crisis that asian nations are facing akhile suman for rajshaha television with camera person sanjay in delhi and china has defended the presence of its uh, troops in the doklam area the statement comes over a month after the standoff with india ended now beijing claim that its soldiers are patrolling the region to exercise sovereignty according to the historical boundary The Chinese foreign ministry also added that the Doklam area has always belonged to it and has been under the effective jurisdiction of it. However, the Ministry of External Affairs has confirmed that there were no new developments at the face of site in the Doklam region. It also dismissed a report claiming that China had shifted its unused road construction material to the north and the east of the region. The 73-day Doklam standoff which began on 16th of June over PLA's plans to build a road in the area claimed by Bhutan ended on 28th of August following mutual agreement between India and China. We have seen press reports on Doklam. There are no new developments at the face of site and its vicinity since the 20th August disengagement. The status quo prevails in this area. any suggestion to the contrary is incorrect and vice president m venkaiah naidu has said that technology along with the managerial excellence can chart a new trajectory for indian railways inaugurating a two day conference technological advancement in railways and metro projects the vice president emphasized the need for expansion of indian railways here is a report Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu on Friday inaugurated the International Conference on Technological Advancements in Railway and Metro Projects at the Manik Shaw Center in Delhi. The Vice President said Indian railways need to plan very meticulously for a massive expansion with forward-looking efficient technologies and innovative practices especially when investors across the world are eyeing opportunities in India. This about 8 lakh crore planned investment to opening up of FDI in retail infrastructure and implementation of GST I am sure the Indian railways will stand to benefit particularly in the long distance transportation in the years ahead technology along with the managerial excellence can chart a new trajectory 
Friends, uh, the vice president said new concepts like transit oriented development should be executed and promoted so as to improve lives of people living around the metro stations. The government of the day should really understand the meaningful suggestions and start implementing and acting because mobility, ability, stability, security, safety is required for sustainability. The vice president also said that discussions on the economy and GST should go on and such debates and consultations are always good for democracy. He asserted that in the long run, GST will be beneficial for all. This is the most revolutionary taxation transformation that is taking place in the country. And in the future, they will really feel happy that such a transformation has taken place in a vast country like uh, India. And that will really help the people. I... The Vice President also expressed hope that the discussions in the two-day conference will provide a fast-track approach to build many state-of-the-art railway systems in India and across the world. The conference was organized by the Defence Infrastructure Planning and Management Council along with the Ministry of Railways, the Ministry of Urban Development and the Niti Aayog. Railway Minister Goyal and Chairman of the Railway Board Ashwini Lohani were also present on the occasion. With Navikram Singh, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And in breakfast news, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome back after the break, a news from Gujarat where Prime Minister Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone and inaugurate a slew of projects during his two-day visit to his home state starting from today. He will kickstart the trip with a visit to Dwarka Dhish Temple, followed by the laying the foundation stone for four national highway projects worth 5,825 crore rupees at Dwarka. He will also address a public gathering there. From Dwarka, Prime Minister Modi is scheduled to visit a Chotila in Surendranagar district where he will lay the foundation stones for a greenfield airport at Rajkot. The Prime Minister will also dedicate a fully automatic milk processing and packaging plant and a drinking water distribution pipeline. He will also launch the Pradhan Mantri Grameen Digital Saksharta Abhyan in Gandhinagar. The Grameen scheme was initiated in February 2017 by the government to provide basic digital literacy training to 6 crore citizens across rural India within two years, targeting at least one person from every household. He will also visit Vadnagar, his birthplace, for the first time since becoming the Prime Minister in 2014. And in a historic move, the Supreme Court Collegium decided to post on its websites its recommendations on judicial appointments, transfers and elevations. The Apex Court Collegium, led by Chief Justice of India Deepak Mishra, took the decision to ensure transparency in judicial appointments. The information will also indicate reasons for the recommendation or rejection of a name for judicial appointment, transfer and elevation. In the first uploaded resolution, information has been provided about appointment of three judicial officers and one judicial member of Income Tax Appellate Tribunal as judge of the Madras High Court. The second resolution uh, talks about the proposal for the appointment of uh, six judicial officers as uh, judges of the Madras High Court. News from the AIA DMK camp and its leader VK Sasikala was on Friday granted parole for five days by prison authorities in Karnataka. Sasikala had sought a parole for 15 days to meet her husband who underwent a liver and kidney transplant at a hospital. Meanwhile, the Openir Selvam and E. Palani Sami camp on a Friday stated claim over the AIA DMK and its symbol before the election commission claiming support of a majority of lawmakers and party cadres. 
The Sesikala camp, which has uh, approached uh, the Election Commission, will present its case uh, before the poll panel on 13th of uh, October. The EPS-OPS camp uh, told the Election Commission that Sesikala and her nephew TTV Dinakaran have been removed from the party and they cannot stake the claim over it or its symbol. The Supreme Court has directed the Election Commission to decision by 10th of uh, November regarding the claim of rival factions. First, our petition, which is filed on 3rd, December, 3rd of this month, that has to be decided first. Because in which we have categorically questioned and also requested that there are several detractions in the affidavits filed by the several persons. So first, cross-examination has to be conducted. So we argued on that aspect. And also, there was a counter-argument. And uh, after hearing both the sides, and uh, for further argument, the case is adjourned to 13th of this month. We are uh, absolute having 100% uh, confident that we have submitted all the documents and we are united and the whole Tamil Nadu cadre and our party men and the people are united together. We will get the symbol. On to international news now. The Nobel uh, Peace Prize for 2017 has been announced and the winner is an anti-nuclear weapons campaign group, ICAN. Now, when announcing the coveted award for this year, the Nobel Committee chairperson said that the risk of nuclear weapons being used is greater than it has been for a long time, especially with nations like North Korea strengthening their nuclear arsenal. ICN has been working for the past 10 years for nuclear disarmament. Against the backdrop of an assertive North Korea and Iran strengthening their nuclear arsenals, the Nuclear Disarmament Group International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons won the Nobel Peace Prize for its decade-long campaign to rid the world of the nuclear threat. The committee said its decision comes at a time when the risk of nuclear weapons being used is greater than it has been for a long time. The organization is receiving the award for its work to draw attention to the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of any use of nuclear weapons and for its groundbreaking efforts to achieve a treaty-based prohibition on such weapons. Announcing the award, the Nobel Committee highlighted ICN's tireless efforts to rid the world of nuclear weapons, especially in an era when North Korean crisis is looming large. ICAN, a coalition of over 300 NGOs, was founded in Vienna in 2007 on the fringes of an international conference on the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Based in Geneva in Switzerland, ICAN has been a key player in adopting a historic nuclear weapons ban treaty signed by 122 countries in July. However, the accord was largely symbolic as none of the nine known world nuclear powers signed it. We're working very hard on, on trying to make nuclear weapons illegal. Uh, they are not yet prohibited by, by a treaty, uh, nuclear weapons. And I think that we're trying to change people's minds. People have been accepting nuclear weapons as legitimate tools for providing security for you know, 70 years now. And we're trying to change the mindset, really, that it's not acceptable to threaten to level an entire city um, just to keep yourself secure. The ICAN will receive their prize consisting of a gold medal, a diploma and a check for 9 million Swedish kronor equivalent to 1.1 million US dollars at a ceremony in Oslo on the 10th of December, the death anniversary of Alfred Nobel. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. On the news from Europe, where Spain has softened its tone on Catalonia independence crisis, apologizing for the violence during Sunday's vote in which hundreds of people were injured. The Spanish government spokesperson apologized to those injured during police efforts to stop the independence referendum. He also called on the Catalan president to return to legality so that they could talk. The apology comes as both the sides look for a way out of the nation's worst political crisis since it became a democracy four decades ago. Catalan president Charles Bugman appears to inch away from a plan to declare independence as early as May. He is likely to address the Catalan parliament on Tuesday after Spain's constitutional court suspended the Catalan parliament session that had been planned for Monday. Catalonia is Spain's richest region and it accounts for 19% of Spain's GDP. In the referendum vote held on Sunday, 90% of people bagged independence. 
lo he dicho antes con toda claridad, eh, cumplían un mandato, no iba dirigido para evitar una, una votación ilegal, iba dirigido a retirar las urnas. Eh, si, si hubo incidentes, y si los hubo y hay personas que resultaron perjudicadas, evidentemente... And a quick wrap of more news from around the globe in World Wrap. The death toll in the suicide attack at a prominent Shia shrine in Pakistan's restive Balochistan province has risen to 22. A suicide bomber detonated his explosive vest when he was uh, stopped by a police officer guarding the Dargah Fatehpur. The attack has been claimed by the Islamic State group. It took place when there was a heavy rush of devotees who had gathered at the shrine in the village of Jhal Muski. Nepal's envoy to India, Deep Kumar Upadhyay, has resigned in order to contest the parliamentary elections starting next month. Upadhyay submitted his resignation to Nepal's foreign minister, Krishna Bahadur Mahara. He is planning to contest the election from the Nepali Congress from Kapilavastu. The government of Nepal has yet to decide over his resignation application, which he submitted 11 months after taking charge. And a magnitude of six earthquake rocked Japan's coastline on Friday, recalling the disaster of 2011, in which at least 16,000 people died. Five Fridays quake struck at about 4 a.m. local time near the Japan Trench, about 300 kilometers away from the Fukushima nuclear disaster site. The most recent quake did not trigger a tsunami and no injuries or damaged buildings were reported. But all eyes remained on the sensitive Fukushima region, which is still recovering from the damage caused by the previous disaster. And on to sports now, the United States uh, defeated India in the ongoing FIFA Under-17 World Cup at the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in New Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Sports Minister Rajivardhan Singh Rathore and AIAFF President Praful Patel were present during the opening ceremony. The hosts lost by three goals to nil from the visitors. In the early minutes of the first half of the match, India saw the efforts go off target after the U.S. started putting pressure on Indian goalkeeper. However, India's star forward Komal Thoratl scored multiple chances and impressed the home sky side with his skills. Despite the defeat, the Indian team has shown that it can compete at the highest level. The hosts will now face the Columbia on 9th of October, followed by the final group game against Ghana on 12th of October. And in cricket, India will take on Australia in the three-match T20 series at JSCA International Stadium in Ranchi today. Comprehensive winners in the ODIs, India would aim to extend this domination, while Australia would bring a change of fortunes. India had reserved one the one-day series against Australia by 4-1 and they reclaimed the number one spot in the ICC rankings. And that's it for me and my team in this edition of News. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day ahead.